Okay, as promised, here's an overview of the three hardest problems from our unit test. First one says, a 945 kilogram car traveling rightward at 22.6 meters per second slams on the brakes and skids to a stop. So what would that look like? That would look like this. Here's a car moving to the right. And the only horizontal force is going to be this one, friction, all right? So we want to figure out, given the coefficient of friction, we want to figure out the distance required to stop. So you have to do this, work backwards. You gotta think, hmm, where do I know distance? Well, over here, we've got some equations that have distance in them. And you gotta think about what's there and what you can use. There's no distance in the first equation in the mama. There is distance in the papa, but it requires that you know time. And there's no way that we're gonna get time from this. So we can't use that. Same thing with baby number two down there, also requires that you know time. So we're left with baby number one right there. So let's think about that a little bit. There it is. If we think about it, we know the final velocity. The, um, the car stops. Uh, the initial velocity, we also know, there it is right there, 22.6 meters per second. So the two things we don't know are acceleration and displacement. So then the question becomes, is there a way to figure out one of those things? Well, one of them is what we're looking for, right? Distance, displacement, straight line, same thing. So is there a way to figure out acceleration? Well, if you know the force, right? If you know the force, then force is equal to mass times acceleration. So which forces are there that's, that are causing this car to slow down? The answer is only friction. We know an equation for friction. Equation for friction is mu times the normal force. And we know the, the mu, the coefficient. Eh, where is it? There it is, over there, 0.972. So we know that. So since we know that, we know this. Do we know the normal force? Well, we have the mass of the car. Let me zoom out a little bit. We have the mass of the car, and uh, we know the acceleration due to gravity, right? So the normal force and the force of gravity on a flat street are the same, and, um, and so that's how we can get that. Once we know the force of friction, we can substitute in Force of friction is known now. We know the mass, and we can solve for the acceleration. And once you've got the acceleration, you can come back over and plug that in. Now you know, oh, oops, you can come back over. Here we go, and plug that in. And now you know three things, one, two, three, and you can solve for displacement. So that's that one. The next one. We've got an ice hockey puck. All right. We know the force that's being applied to it. We know there's no friction. And we want to figure out the final velocity. So to figure out the final velocity, we need the initial velocity, acceleration, and time. We know the initial velocity. Uh, it's uh, at rest, so that's zero. Acceleration, we'd have to figure out. Time, we know. That's how long it's being pushed, 0 0.0721 seconds. So if we can figure out the acceleration, we can solve this. So the question is, can we go back and figure out acceleration? Well, if we know net force and mass, right? Net force and mass, we can solve for acceleration. The net force in the x direction is only the applied force. There's no friction. So we know the applied force. We know the mass. There it is. We can solve for the acceleration. Got the acceleration, take it over here, plug it in, and solve for the final velocity. And then the last one is this one right here about an airplane. We know the initial and final velocities. This plane is slowing down and we know the time and we know the mass of the plane and we want to figure out the friction force. So here's the free body diagram. Gravity, normal force, friction force, no applied force. If we want to figure out the friction force, we either need to know the coefficient of friction and the normal force. We know the normal force or we could get it at least, we have the mass. 
but there's no way to figure out the coefficient of friction without doing a whole bunch of stuff. So there's no way to do that. The other option is that the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. So uh, do we know the sum of the forces? Well, the only force in the x direction is the force of friction, right? Um, we don't know what that is, but that's what we're looking for. Do we know the mass? Yes. Do we know the acceleration? No, but we do know both velocities and time. And acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So we can solve for acceleration and then plug it in and solve for friction. And that's it. And there you go.